So far we have looked into the chemical degradation process. Uh, now in this lecture we shall look into one of the physical degradation processes that is the frost attack and then we will look into general strategy for making durable concrete. So the general outline therefore would be frost attack followed by role of concrete and concrete quality and durability. Right? And uh, obviously followed from that is general strategy of achieving durable concrete. Now what does frost do? Well this is, this is not a very common phenomena in most of the uh, part of uh, our country excepting the northern part Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal and uh, JNK uh, because it is a, it's a phenomena related to cold climate. So when ice formation takes place due to freezing of water during the winter season, the frost can actually result in damage to the concrete. Right. So, how does it do? Present, presence of salt lowers freezing point of water in concrete. Well, normally the concrete, has, I mean, water has got a freezing point zero. And just broadly, before we look into the details, um, this water in a saturated concrete, when it gets frozen, would actually will become ice, and this ice exert pressure onto the concrete in, in, inside the concrete generates some sort of internal pressure within concrete and which causes damage to the concrete in the long run. So that is what is a frost attack we are trying to look into this. First of all if we look at it since there are salts pre present in the uh, pore water of concrete these salts would lower down the freezing point you know depression of freezing point by putting some solute into the water. Then also in very fine pores the water freezes at lower temperature because the other other forces comes in the surface tension forces and other forces surface forces would come in and there it freezes at lower temperature. So in concrete water does not freeze at 0 degree centigrade but it freezes at lower temperature and there is no single freezing point of water in the concrete you know there is no single freezing point of water in the concrete and uh, some portion water you know all water definitely will not freeze together. If the pore solute is the concrete is saturated with water, some portion water will freeze and become ice, other portion still it will remain water because the freezing point is not same and all water does not become is not frozen together. So that is what happens and when such a thing is occurring, uh, such a thing is occurring you know there is some percentage of volume increase in within the within you know volume increase due to the formation of ice and this ice pressure exerts pressure into the rest of the concrete. Now one important point is that gel pores are so small that there are no freezing takes place. We have we remember that there are two main types of inherent pores in concrete the capillary pores coming from hydration of cement the water filled space which does not get occupied by the hydrates of cement that we called as capillary pores and if you remember they are of larger sizes and the other types of pores are gel pores which are very fine sizes order of Armstrong sizes uh, 10 to 15 Armstrong sizes if you remember you know. Uh, so those size such fine pores such very small pores actually freezing does not occur there at all. So freezing occurs only in capillary pores and due to the freezing formation of ice there is an approximately 9 percent increase in the volume of due to the formation of ice you know. So the, the water which was occupying a volume will now occupy more volume because of formation of ice and volume increases about 9 percent. Now when such 9 percent or some percentage of increase in volume is there still unfrozen water in the capillary pores is subjected to hydraulic pressure by expanding volume of the ice. You know you have something like this, you have you have something like this, you have something like this, you know you have something like this let us say water and suddenly there is an ice formation that has taken place. It is all water and suddenly ice formation has taken place. Now this ice would occupy you know it will occupy more volume than the original water. You know if this was the original water ice would occupy now more volume and it will exert pressure, hydraulic pressure. And all directions. So, in a, whichever pore 
since the pores are interconnected wherever actually some ice formation has taken place that will exert pressure into the pore water, hydraulic pressure into the pore water right because of the volume expansion of the ice right. If this pressure remains it is not relieved by some means the water pressure hydraulic pressure then this induces internal tensile stresses and it can cause local failure. Now what happens next after the one cycle of freezing there will be thawing. Now since the cracks should have developed or you know uh, some, some since the unrelieved pressure was there that would have caused some new cracks and those spaces which were created additional spaces created due to the un, you know by the unrelieved pressure. Now they will be also available those spaces also will be available for water to enter. First thawing takes place so ice melts into water and subsequent you know subsequently additional water can also enter into those new space that has been created by cracks. And then what will happen next time they too will you know will contribute to the overall spore space where this uh, uh, frost action would be realized where hydraulic pressure will increase. And if this process continues, continue, continues for several cycle damages would be observed into the concrete. So concrete get damaged, concrete gets damaged after several cycles. Right. The gel water does not you know there is no ice formation in gel water. When ice formation takes place in capillary pores the gel water then there is a you know sort of gradient existing there is some water in the gel, gel water is there it has got you know the, the absorbed water is there and there is ice less reduction in water and possibly if it is all ice formation has taken place the drying of the gel will actually gel water you know gel pores would take place some gel water will come into the capillary pores. So the drying actions could be there in fact gel water can move gel water can move to capillary pores once ice formation has taken place and thus again freezes. So water actually gel water also moves to the capillary. So already capillary water which has become ice further gel water tends to move there and then it tries to tries to actually cause excess pressure there. So it increases the hydraulic pressure if eventually it is able to move it will become ice some excess pressure would be created. So hydraulic pressure would increase. Finally as content of liquid water decreases diminishes concentration of solute also increases. Now in the same pore if this was my pore this was my pore now some portion has become ice some portion some ice formation has taken place actually some ice formation has taken place okay some portion has become let us say ice this portion has become ice. Now the water has decreased by but my solutes which were there earlier the solutes which were there earlier you know solutes which were present earlier they were already there they are there their content they did not contribute to the ice formation they have not got inside gone inside the ice it is only water which has got converted into ice. So concentration of this solute will now increase inside this pore. Now this concentration increase this concentration increase will actually result in osmotic pressure and addict to the hydraulic pressure. So concentration change because osmotic pressure is related to the concentration. So osmotic pressure would actually all, all add to the hydraulic pressure. So therefore what we see is this is a this is a progressive process or it is a process one link to the other sort of cascading effect first water in the capillary is becoming ice because the no single freezing point now the ice some water becoming ice gel water will tend to move also since some waters in the capillaries have become ice solute, solute concentration there would increase and uh, uh, the solution will become more saturated exerting more os osmotic pressure in the uh, in net uh, some total is increased pressure into the internal pressure within the concrete and that is the mechanism of frost action and right. So that is how it will be when it exerts it will actually cause cracking of the surrounding concrete cracking of the surrounding concrete. In fact it is observed at the surface first why because water would 
surface water you know surface water is water enters through the surface maybe everything within the depth of the concrete is not saturated and then surface would get cooled fast uh, surface will get cooled cool fast and ice formation will take place there and it will penetrate inside gradually and in the long run surface concrete starts cracking and actually spalling so there will be some cracking and spalling of the concrete in form of removal of concrete from the surface so loss of concrete from the surface takes place after several cycles of freezing and thawing but one interesting point is if you have some empty air voids which are not actually available to water you know some empty capillaries are there which are not available to the water initially and when pressure exert, you know when when hydraulic pressure increases this pressure can you know this exertion of this pressure can result in penetration into those capillaries the water will go there and the pressure will be relieved so if i have some reserved cap pore spaces right which are not which are air filled and not occupied by air when water exerts hydraulic pressure due to freezing action the pressure can be relieved through those spaces and if this becomes possible the effect of freezing can be freezing thawing can be reduced and that's the that's the idea against protection that's the idea of protection against frost action right so generally extent of damage starts from surface scaling as we said from surface scaling right from surface scaling to complete disintegration as layers of ice are formed initiating from surface and progresses through the depth so it starts from the surface and goes through the depth most important again dry concrete is not vulnerable to frost action dry concrete is not vulnerable to frost action so dry concrete is not vulnerable to frost action and rh below 80 to 90 percent 80 to 90 percent 80 to 90 percent is highly resistant to frost action so this is a physical phenomena it's no longer chemical it is a physical phenomena and water is again the main agent if you can keep it dry this phenomena would not occur this phenomena would not occur so that is what it is very important nothing should penetrate in the concrete from outside especially water penetration that should be stopped major way how it is protected make from we make frost resistant concrete is deliberate air entrainment in low water cement ratio concrete so we entrain the air air entrainment agents are used in uh, cold climate this is almost a regulation practice practice for exposed concrete because this deliberately entrained air pockets which are uniformly distributed through the concrete struct you know concrete uh, material concrete material is very uniformly distributed and they are very fine pores um, these pores are are not actually accessible to the water in the beginning but they can serve as reserve pore spaces which can allow pressure to be relieved because when the water exert pressure that can enter into those pores break the boundaries of those pores and enter into them so they are not initially water filled they are closed pore systems not available through the interconnected porosity but some of it actually gets you know it becomes available or gets converted into interconnected porosity in one cycle of freezing but there will be still some more left in the next cycle of freezing there will be more of such pores which will be brought into the interconnected uh, porosity through really pressure release through pressure release pressure will get released and the water will enter into the water will enter into those air entrained pores deliberately air entrained pores so this process continues every year some amount of air entrained pore will be uh, used up in relieving the pressure and what you find the number of cycles and non air entrained concrete can withstand number of freezing thawing cycles and a non air entrained concrete can withstand is much less compared to air entrained concrete which can withstand much higher number of larger number of freezing and thawing cycles so this is one of the ways of making frost resistance concrete right they are well distributed air voids adjacent to water filled capillaries allows water to flow into them and relieve pressure that's the basic idea that's what they do 
and if you see this diagram this will make it somewhat clear what happens you see when actually when uh, temperature this side you see you can see the lower temperature here minus 20 minus 15 etc etc to up to plus 20. So, when temperature is reduced you know along this direction reduced reduction of temperature takes place actually temperature is reduced and we can see the volume volume of concrete specimen now there will be some amount of contractions. So, people have studied contraction and they saw the normal contraction should have followed thermal contraction which is there actually thermal contraction the volume is decreasing volume decreased along this direction along this direction volume is decreasing. So, this is the normal thermal contraction that should have followed, but when you go below 0 degree centigrade if you do not have an air entry in concrete what happens is there is an expansion along this direction and this expansion is because of this freezing effect what it does it actually causes expansion due to formation of ice which exerts pressure and there is a disruption of the concrete overall concrete gets expanded. So, overall volume increase in concrete take place, but if you have used air entrained or air entraining agent in production of the concrete and uh, entrained air into the concrete then the path followed is this. In fact, you will have more contraction than the thermal contraction. So, additional contraction due to relief of this pressure. So, what will happen this pressure release allows you thermal contraction plus additional contraction also take place and that is how actually frost resistant concrete is produced frost resistant concrete is produced right. So, that is what is the action of frost. So, then now we have so far we have discussed all the types of possible degradation mechanism in concrete there can be some more, but by major ones you have covered the chemical ones and the physical one there is a frost action. Although frost action is not very common in larger part of uh, this country, but this phenomena tells us or uh, you know discussion on this tells us uh, how uh, what are the what are the mechanisms how physical even physical deterioration processes are there. One thing we have co found common in all cases is the presence of moisture in all cases uh, we have found the presence of in all cases we have found the presence of moisture is a main cause of deterioration you know presence of moisture is a so basically it is moisture this point must be noted down and ingress it comes from outside moisture ingress is the main that is the main thing and how does it in how does it come in through the pores mainly the capillary pores mainly the capillaries mainly the capillaries. So, this is one thing we have found common in all cases we have said that if you can keep the water away well the durability of the concrete will be achieved. So, that is the first fundamental that uh, how durability of the concrete should be achieved strategy for durability and that is what our discussion now would focus around this. Well, let us just uh, relook into the definition what we said durable concrete should exhibit desired performance in exposure during service that is what is a durable concrete. Durable concrete should exhibit desired performance or satisfactory performance in the environmental exposure during its service whatever exposure it is for the time whatever we have specified. And the point that I would like to reiterate again is all the deterioration process discussed involve ingress of water and in some cases of course, oxygen or carbon dioxide or some other fluid causing the degradation. So, it is the ingress of materials which is important ingress of fluids and therefore, the property that was historically the property that was that one looked into is the permeability. Just going back a little bit to the history you see initially people thought initial research in concrete durability was very little because it was thought that concrete is highly durable it is definitely more durable than many other materials not readily reacting like iron in steel. So, people thought it is one of the structural material it is very durable, but after all you produce it with the expense of energy. So, therefore, it will have tendency to react therefore, it cannot be in finite durability. So, by by you know as the concrete uh, concrete uh, uh, structures uh, their use became more popular in aggressive environments like tropical countries 
in offshore one started finding that after all concrete is not really of infinite durability. So one got to look into the durability of concrete. Now how do you see what is it what thing was understood is it is the water which is the sole agent which you know which is which causes the durability problem or oxygen or something of that kind. Now how to study this what should be the parameter in soil one uses permeability Darcy's law one uses permeability this Darcy's law we will just present this one. So this concept was borrowed you know in porous media uh, one of the simplest parameter or material property what one which one can look into is the permeability. So permeability is the measure of the ease with which liquid or gas can travel through the concrete and this has been used as a qualitative measure of durability. Why qualitative? Because uh, quantitative the permeability alone is not sufficient. You see if you remember we looked into permeability in case of soil saturated permeability permeability in saturated state when it is water saturated. Now this cannot be a quantitative measure because concrete is rarely saturated most of the time it is unsaturated concrete is very rarely saturated unless it is submerged concrete and in submerged concrete problem of durability is much less because those degradation process which requires oxygen or carbon dioxide would not be there. Some other we have seen uh, that you know uh, the, although the moisture presence of moisture will be there but some other some of the reactions which can go in which requires presence of air they would not go in. So they are relatively less prone than areas where actually wetting drying goes on. Anyway coming back to the permeability why it cannot be a qualitative measure quantitative measure because unsaturated concrete the permeability is function of the moisture content itself and one has to look into extended Darcy's law for unsaturated flow and more complex things. But at the moment one is not interested in the modeling or calculating the service life. In fact we do not have reliable model for such a thing. So what we do we measure qualitatively and compare you know permeability is used or similar permeation qualities there are other absorption tests etc which are used as qualitative measure for comparing two concretes for their durability. So we will now focus our discussion on permeability itself. Now permeability is defined if you remember from Darcy's law from Darcy's law it is defined like this rate of flow per unit area if it is q q is the rate of flow in meter cube per meter square right meter cube is the flow per unit time per second. So q will have a unit of meter cube per meter square per second in other words it is meter per second and this has been from Darcy's law this is proportional to k and it is a constant of the material for saturated permeability this we are talking of only saturated permeability at the moment. So it is constant for the material saturated permeability is equals to into dh dx rate of change of hydraulic gradient with x or pressure you can relate it to dp dx as well whatever it is this is defined this is the conventional way of defining this is called dh dx is called hydraulic gradient this should be written as small d. So dh dx is hydraulic gradient. So rate of flow per unit area is proportional to hydraulic gradient and the constant of proportionality we call as coefficient of permeability and its unit is meter per second. So you can see that dh dx is unitless if it is head in meter and x is also in meter so it is unitless so k would be meter per second. So people try to measure coefficient of permeability for cement paste this is for cement paste or even you can measure for concrete but it is a very very tedious process because unlike soil concrete is relatively impervious and it takes months to arrive at the steady state and measure it. So, but people have done this measurement and interesting to see that permeability is a function of capillary porosity. So as your capillary porosity percent increases it actually increases permeability increases and you can see the order you know 10 to the power minus 13 uh, meter per second. So you can see the order actually very small permeability. So as your capillary porosity increases it increases but beyond a particular porosity which could be a percolation threshold you know percolation threshold I will just discuss this what it is suddenly the permeability increases significantly. What is this why does it do this way you see initially pores are all 
if you have low capillary porosity pores will be possibly isolated very little interconnected. But as the porosity increases the point comes when all the pores becomes interconnected that means that is a percolation threshold above which all pores becomes interconnected. So, when you have large amount of interconnected pores you know permeability increases significantly. So, permeability this there is a threshold above which actually threshold capillary porosity above which uh, uh, per permeability increases significantly. So, if you have looked into the capillary porosity and we know the capillary porosity is a function of the water cement ratio then why not look into water cement ratio and similarly it would be seen the water cement ratio and capillary and permeability has got the similar kind of relationship 10 to the power minus 14 meter per second and water cement ratio and it has been observed that at low water cement ratio at low water cement ratio permeability is small and you have suddenly above 0 0.5 water cement ratio permeability become very high. Because above 0 0.5 water cement ratio you have now sufficient capillary pores, the capillary porosity is sufficiently large and they all get interconnected. So, therefore, water cement ratio controls the durability as well. We have seen that water cement ratio controls the strength at it controls the durability as well because durability is or moisture ingress which is the primary factor towards durability is dependent on the capillary porosity which in turn is dependent on the water cement ratio. So, that is what it is water cement ratio is very important from durability as well right. We shall see some more things related to this. It has been observed that with age the permeability would decrease you know permeability coefficient of permeability in concrete decreases with age. This is with concrete that was with the uh, you know this uh, I mean this cement paste and similar all cement based materials they behave in the similar manner. So, this is in log scale it is it is actually it, as the age increases as the age increases coefficient of permeability reduces down reduces down because the hydration takes place and capillary pores are reduced with hydration capillary pores are reduced. Remember the equation for capillary porosity it involved H degree of hydration higher the degree of hydration capillary porosity will be low and therefore, permeability reduces, but beyond a point capillary porosity does not reduce and that is why this curve also became straight line. How can we can control the permeability let us see or permeation let me call it because permeability is a relative measure you can compare permeability of two concrete whichever has got lower permeability is more durable, but permeation property let me see. This permeation property is a function of porosity because larger the porosity flow path the area available you know cross sectional area available for flow to take place would be more, but it is also important the pore sizes because you know the flow is a function of the pore sizes r the radius of the pore or diameter of the pore sizes are important. Sizes are important in strength also because we have seen that strength is inversely proportional to size critical stress was inversely proportional to size. So, it is also important here sizes are important. Then their shape should be also important here because you know the flow would also depend upon this, but more important is interconnectivity and tortuosity because pores in concrete are tortuous they you know their paths are tortuous. So, we talk in terms of tortuosity if this is the L and actual L is for example, L uh, actual let me call it. So, tortuosity tau would be L A divided by L. So, this tortuosity is also important how long the path is right. So, this porosity pore size shape interconnectivity and tortuosity etcetera actually they govern the ingress of fluids through the concrete. Therefore, these are important parameters porosity is again the important parameter as far as durability is concerned as far as durability is concerned. So, pore properties and porosity they are directly related to water to cement ratio. In fact, pore sizes their interconnectivity they are all related to water to cement ratio and that is why one should control the water cement ratio to get better durability right. Now, there is additional thing if you remember when we talked about curing we said that curing results in segmenting the capillary porosity. I mean in other words if you do not do the curing properly 
ports may not be segmented. There are minimum number of days required to segment minimum number of days of curing required to ensure segmented capillary system. If we remember 0.4 water cement ratio requires 3 days and we said that if the water cement ratio is more than 0.7 even if you do water curing for 1 year well it is not going to segment the uh, pores you know segmentation of the pores will not be achieved. So, curing days and low water cement ratio you know sufficient adequate number of curing days. If you do not cure the capillary will not be segmented even though you have got low water cement ratio. So, this is what is observed in the next diagram as you can see you know these two diagram shows pores having the two pore systems having similar porosity. They have porosity values not largely different, but in this case they are all connected porosity there is interconnectivity they are not segmented pores they are not segmented pores these are all actually here you can see they are segmented this has become smaller and this has become smaller. So, some pores have reduced and in, in other words it has got segmented some of the pores are just finishing off there although total porosity by and large would be same. So, this will be much low permeability than high permeability. This actually tells us the importance of curing with respect to durability as well. So, if you do not do proper curing the durability you cannot be ensured because segmentation of the capillaries would not be there right. So, this is what it is role of interconnectivity. So, what we have seen that uh, water cement ratio plays a major role, but one point we did not uh, mention actually is uh, the cement content because cement content ensures uh, proper compaction. In case of sulphate attack it has been found that higher cement content shows better resistances towards sulphate attack. In other words high cementitious content you may talk about high fines amount of fines, fines of the cement size they ensure better compaction. They also ensure release of right kind of uh, 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 alkalis in case of pH etcetera etcetera, but more important is the compaction part of it. So, cement content is also important from compaction point of view or cementitious content that should be. So, they are important from uh, and, and second issue is when you have minimum cement content for normal mixes workable mixes ensuring a water cement ratio and a minimum cement content ensure sufficient amount of water content as well. Because if I am fixing up if I am fixing up you know if I am fixing up uh, if I am fixing up water to cement ratio minimum maximum this I am fixing up a maximum you know water cement ratio max I am fixing up and a C minimum I am fixing up. So, I will ensure sufficient amount of water as well because this maximum is fixed at into some value and this minimum is fixed at some value. So, I will have minimum cement correspondingly I can you know uh, the amount of water is also ensured for which will and, and compaction is ensured by total minimum quantity of C. So, when this this all this put together actually ensures that I have sufficient I have sufficient uh, you know compaction achieved into the concrete. So, this is what it is uh, right. So, we can ensure that there is sufficient amount of compaction achieved into the concrete when you have uh, minimum cement content and also maximum water cement ratio right. But one more important issue is the surface concrete. Surface concrete is not at the same is not same as the other concrete because you see first thing ingress takes place to the surface and also stresses are maximum at the surface because you know bending stresses will be maximum at the surface that is what we have seen when a beam bends when a beam bends bending of the beam takes place let us say when a beam bends. Uh, when if you are looking at bending of a beam right. So, after bending the beam would be something like this and uh, bending stresses tension is maximum here compression is maximum here. So, stresses are maximum at the surface similarly torsional stresses will also will be maximum at the surface. So, whenever you have non uniform stresses stresses are maximum at the surface and concrete cover is also there concrete cover is also 
you know I mean the reinforcement is also there. So, what we see ingress takes place through the surface and permeability of cover concrete is important. The stresses are maximum at the surface and rebars are placed below the cover. So, therefore, cover concrete is very very important, but cover concrete is not generally good. It is somewhat poor quality because of bleeding, wall effect etcetera etcetera. Let us see in the next diagram we can see, see if this is my concrete, this concrete these are the zone of poor concrete. Why? Because this places the wall effect etcetera comes into picture. So, concrete is not compacted as well as this. Similarly, this zone again concrete will not be as good as well packed compared to let us say this point, but another issue is there obviously, water cement ratio will be minimum here because cement will have a tendency to come down and water will have a tendency to come up. So, this results in formation of further zone of washed concrete because zone of washed concrete comes up here at the top portion. Since the water has a tendency to move up water and cement has a tendency to move down this places will have higher you know lower water cement ratio, lower water cement ratio water to cement and this will have highest W by C high. So, therefore, I will have this is inherent in concrete I mean I can reduce it down, but this is generally inherent in concrete I can reduce you know and this we have discussed in connection with non destructive testing also. So, water will have a tendency to come up. So, this is the zone of poorest concrete these are the zone of poor concrete and what are the zone of good concrete let us see the zone of good concrete is somewhere here. So, zone of good concrete is somewhere here. So, we see that uh, uh, concrete uh, you know properties are poorer in the surface. However, this surface concrete is the most important concrete for durability. This is poorer you know poorer concrete you see in the surface, but the surface concrete is most important for durability. So, whenever we are talking of water cement ratio for durability we can just talk about the surface concrete. So, if you have means for improving surface concrete then that would serve a better purpose. In fact, modern day we have uh, some sort of means called control permeability formwork liner which can actually improve the water cement ratio reduce down the water cement ratio of the surface concrete. Anyway that is that is not part of our discussion at the moment, but uh, that is what it is. So, so far then we have seen the surface concrete effects that is one thing we have seen, but we have seen more importantly the uh, porosity, pore interconnectivity and pore properties control the concrete durability and this can be controlled through water cement ratio and also through somewhat through cement minimum cement content. Now, what are the factors which affect the durability? First of all environment and sometimes loading also. Environment means if you are an exposure to marine environment obviously, there you got to take more care because it will not be just any concrete will not be durable you have to have specific concrete there. Also loading although loading is not much discussed, but you see fatigue loading is more problematic than static loading you know concrete when concrete is exposed to a fatigue loading repetitive loading then cracks can come at much lower stresses and therefore, in such exposure condition one has to take extra care because concrete may be cracked. So, fatigue loading is an important issue, static loading is less dangerous and environment of course, is very important. The cover is very very important, concrete quality is one thing, but the cover is very very important. The depth of the cover, the quality of the cover both are important, both are important. Then ingredients materials in concrete. Now, ingredients should not have any material which can cause durability problem. I mentioned about presence of chloride in concrete. So, chloride should not be present in concrete from the ingredients or any other materials which can create problem. For example, aggregate prone to potentially prone to alkali aggregate reactivity should not be there. So, ingredient itself should be first of all proper so that you know it should become a durable concrete, but then you can use additional ingredients like cements. You can use appropriate cement for the appropriate environment. So, ingredients materials in concrete they do affect the uh, durability of concrete you can choose them accordingly or reject whatever is not desirable. 
obviously we have seen the most important parameter is cement content and water cement ratio and finally the compaction of the concrete achieved at site, compaction achieved of the site. The member shape is somewhat important because it should not allow for you know avoid water accumulation because what we have seen is it is the water which is the main culprit as far as durability of concrete is concerned. If the water cannot penetrate in the concrete no durability problem will be there. Main thing is ingress of water in whichever form. Now this ingress since concrete is porous you know uh, unless a very high strength concrete and very low, low porosity concrete if the if it is if it is continuously let us say in contact with water there would be tendency for water to penetrate into the concrete because there is a constant hydraulic pressure unless you have specifically taken care of that hydraulic pressure. For example, in, in hydraulic structures you specifically take care of that the you know make the concrete in such a manner that even in presence of water the moisture ingress to it will be much less. So, that is by design, but supposing consider a roof slab or something of that kind its shape is such that it always, always cause accumulation of water or even even you know improper construction which uh, allows water to accumulate because the slope has not been proper, the draining is not proper. Say, say in case of uh, uh, where you know domestic toilet or bath where if, if the slopes are not along the right direction, not along the direction of the trap so that the water actually drains off, it can result in water accumulation and subsequently since the concrete used there is not very high grade, you cannot use that way because it would be very costly. So, uh, the water would penetrate into the concrete and making it susceptible to various kind of degradation process. So, shape of the member, their construction practices they are very very important from that point of view so that water does not accumulate. The strategy for durability obviously has to be cost effective. We know that we can make the surface impervious by means of coating, by putting various kind of coating, by putting possibly extra layer of different layer of concrete, but the economics may not justify this. Best way is to make a good concrete, ensure the concrete as per our codal practice which has come from experience, ensure that that has been adhered to properly and that would make durable concrete. Okay. So, this is the basic overall uh, structure of now that is why the uh, Indian standard code of practice what it does it has actually classified the conditions I said the environment affects the durability. Since the environment affects the durability the environment has been classified into five exposure condition that is mild, moderate, severe, very severe and extreme. We will try to define them somewhat, but uh, this is uh, has been you know this has been taken actually from international experience. Uh, generally the exposure condition that would be that would be uh, encountered in a tropical climate is, is is one can define them in terms of the climatic condition because uh, mainly the, the you know it's a, again the water and water and possibly uh, the environment uh, environment uh, you know like like marine environment and so on for example wetting drying plays a big role in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, durability now that would depend upon the rainfall pattern so uh, the classification of course is valid for those sort of situation also an exposed structure continuously exposed to wetting and drying. But again just wetting drying, the wetting drying cycle in details if one looks into the details, wetting drying cycle is it would be would, would be quite different in different places. For example, I just give the example before we come back to uh, before we come back to uh, the details of the IS code requirement. Uh, say, say a cycle of wetting drying that one would encounter in, in say northeast of the country you will have you can have if this is the concrete surface surface you will have large period of wetting you know large because monsoon period if this is this is the months in the year months in the year months in the year in the year right the monsoon months are much larger in northeast you know it would be all this would be monsoon months say say starting from may to september would be monsoon months in northeast in northeast but if you come to let us say in 
composite monsoon climate it will be only small portion. So, in composite monsoon climate say Delhi it will be only small portion where you will have rains and wetting and wetting rains and wetting. So, depending upon the climate rains and wetting depending upon the climate depending upon the climatic condition the wetting drying cycle varies. So, one when one looks at details of this one when one looks at details then this classification can be even uh, made into wider classification. But at the moment since this is all prescriptive measures we do not have way to model durability problem I cannot calculate very easily the service life. There are some empirical models for certain situations, but uh, they are validity of them are not yet you know they are not calibrated against real life experiences many of them. So, therefore, we do not really calculate service life at the moment, but we have some sort of prescriptive measures. We say that you do not do this, do not do this or do this and that kind of thing. So, which we call prescriptive recommendation and most of the codes all over the world go for prescriptive recommendation and so does IS code as well. And that is why we have some prescription in terms of minimum cement content, maximum water cement ratio and grade of concrete and minimum cover. Right. So, the prescriptions are there. Similarly, if you have sulphate uh, you know like uh, sulphate uh, environment with sulphate we have what type of forms of cement, what types of cement we should use in specific environment, what possible types these are given. So, codes at the moment are all prescriptive most of the codes in the uh, in the in, uh, you know with reference to durability are prescriptive they are not performance based because our understanding of the durability problem is relatively le less as far as concrete is concerned. So, therefore, code provides prescriptions and we have definitions of exposure conditions like I said mild, I said uh, mild, moderate you know mild, moderate uh, or, or, or very severe exposure or extreme exposure condition etcetera etcetera. And the prescriptions are given in terms of minimum cement content, maximum water ratio, but I would like to discuss a little bit about grade of concrete. because. Grade of concrete means when you have higher grade of concrete obviously you are automatically ensuring the low water cement ratio and sufficiently high cement content. For a given workability you are assuming a sufficient cement content. So, this is a double check for low water cement ratio and cement content. A second way of looking at it the same grade of concrete could be different. Since you have already low water cement ratio you cannot get a low strength concrete automatically you will get high strength relatively higher strength concrete. So, why not use higher grade of concrete because otherwise one can use let us say M 20 grade of concrete in a in a very severe uh, uh, condition. Supposing this this clause you know this restriction was not there this prescription was not there. So, in very severe you end up using let us say low grade of concrete because in buildings you can do that and uh, uh, say M 20 grade of concrete, but your maximum water cement ratio is very low such low that automatically you will get the strength of concrete M 30 equivalent of M 30. So, then why use low grade cement you know low low I mean low concrete grade concrete you use the grade of concrete also high you can economize on the whole thing. So, considering all this aspect grade of concrete has been prescribed. Let us see what are the exposure condition and what are the prescription. Now, the exposure those are defined are some part of the exposures I have picked up and I am giving you just as an example. For example, the mild represents mild exposure is nothing but it is protected. Mild means it is protected you know this is protected. So, it is protected not exposed that is a mild exposure. Mild exposure obviously you require you can use low pretty low cement you can go for highest water cement ratio here. And then moderate is sheltered from severe rain not exposed to severe rain and more other 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 conditions are also given. So, just as an example it is taken to see that how it changes from protected you know mild to extreme. So, where, whereas mild is protected this is sheltered from severe rain this is exposed to severe rain and wetting and drying exposed to severe rain and wetting and drying this is exposed to sea water spray spray and this is tidal zone because wetting drying has got more effect as I mentioned all processes some of the processes particularly chloride ingress wetting and drying plays much bigger role. Because while wetting the solution also goes in and chloride is deposited there while drying this chloride remains there 
and next wetting again chloride concentration increases. So, wetting and drying plays more stronger role than simply continuously wet condition actually there will be there will be no carbonation and corrosion process also cannot proceed if it is fully saturated. If it is partially saturated then only all these things happen corrosion can proceed in partially saturated concrete. So, that way if you have a submerged concrete RCC structure that is will be less prone to corrosion compared to the place where actually wetting and drying takes place. That is why tidal zone is in the extreme a sea water spray which takes place in structures uh, that that is very severe. So, these are example from going from protected to the tidal zone very severe condition you know extreme conditions and protection measures are defined accordingly right. This just as an example the elaborate the actually code is quite elaborate onto that and one can look into the refer to the code table 5 of IS 456 2000 to see uh, the this this sort of requirements that is given. Table 4 possibly or 3 defines the exposure condition and table 5 gives you this. Now, in table 5 is given and or in this table is given the prescriptive recommendation. You see it says that if you have a mild condition exposure condition the minimum cement you should use is 300 kg per meter cube units are not given here this is kg per meter cube kg per meter cube and maximum water cement ratio is 0.55. The minimum grade of concrete that you can use is M20 moderate 300. So, you go this side minimum cement content increases along this direction and water cement ratio increases along this direction this is the least and this is the highest. And as I was telling you if you have any way the maximum water cement ratio is 0.4 possibly the strength grade of the cement I mean you cannot you will not have the strength of the grade of the concrete as M20 you will automatically reach close to M40. So, therefore, why not use the minimum grade M40 this will ensure that you use this water cement ratio and possibly the cement content nothing less than that and uh, uh, the you can use this in structural design and economize it also. So, the grade you can see is increasing along this direction the cement content increasing along this direction whereas, water cement ratio is increasing along this direction. So, this is the this is the recommendation of the code Indian standard code IS 456 2000 as far as uh, minimum cement content water cement ratio and minimum grade of concrete is concerned. But this is actually meant for ordinary Portland cement these ones are meant for ordinary Portland cement. When it comes to Portland pozzolana cement and blended cement uh, you can you can use the total quantity towards the cementitious it is not only the you know total cementitious you will consider the pozzolana plus the cement the slag plus the OPC content. So, both can be used, but only with the restriction of to the fact that the pozzolana that you can supposing you have added 50 percent pozzolana all this 50 percent pozzolana cannot be counted towards this cement minimum cement content only that allowed in the relevant IS code for example, <coughs> in case of uh, it is 1429 IS 1429 which says that the what is the permissible amount of fly ash in cement. So, only that much quantity you can take for calculating the water cement ratio or minimum cement content. So, in calculation of minimum cement content you can add up the ordinary Portland cement content plus the pozzolana content subject to the condition the pozzolana con content should not exceed the maximum permissible in the relevant code. Similarly, GBFS granulated blast furnace slag you can take in this calculation but subject to the condition that the maximum GBFS you are taking in calculating minimum cementitious is does not exceed that permitted in the relevant code that is 4, 455 IS 455. And this is the water cement ratio in this say calculation similarly you can take the cement content cement plus the slag or pozzolana depending, but the pozzolana and the slag content not exceeding the maximum permissible in their relevant code. So, that is what it is that is what is the prescription prescriptive recommendation in Zion 456. The cover that is prescribed minimum cover for mild condition minimum cover general for durability covers are also specified for fire protection etcetera etcetera. In column minimum cover of course, should be, should be minimum 40 or the it is related to the diameter of the bar also, but from durability the minimum cover required 
for service life, you know adequate service life, this is 20, moderate is 30 and as you go this increases as we go downward and this is understandable because in a severe environment you must provide higher cover to the reinforcement bar, otherwise it would be affected by reinforcement corrosion. So, this is the prescription given in the code. <coughs> this is the prescription given in the code and we can now gradually summarize the discussion on durability. Uh, similar table is also available for sulphate, uh, sulphate you know sulphate environment where it prescribes the cement content minimum water cement ratio, maximum water cement ratio and minimum cement content. I just did not show it because it is all available in the code. So, these are prescriptive recommendation they are given in the code and in an environment given environment one must follow that. That is the current strategy for durable concrete. Well, summarizing the durability therefore, this actually completes our discussion on durability of concrete. Uh, today of course, we have looked into frost action, roll up permeability and cover concrete and then prescriptive recommendation of IS 456. Uh, but uh, you know durability still I would say in uh, not 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 complete in its research and requires lot of research overall discussion or summarizing overall uh, durability we have looked into we have defined the parameters like service life durability etc then we have looked into all the degradation process and then lastly we have looked into the durability strategy that is given in the code and i think with this we end our discussion on durability of concrete thank you Thank you for, for being with us.